Hello, hello, welcome to my channel where I like to talk about pregnancy, prenatal care as a way for both mommy and daddy to get along and understand each other through the hardships of having a baby. Having a baby can be very, 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 very much a great, amazing experience with a lot of anxiety and stress for both mommy and daddy. Um, there's also a lot of misunderstanding between mommy and daddy during pregnancy because we just don't have enough education on prenatal care and that's where I come in. I want to fill in that education gap so that there is a more formal way to learn about pregnancy where mommy and daddy can both understand, um, both partners can understand. This episode is about the third trimester. So the third trimester is between week 27 and 43. A pregnancy can last up to 43 weeks. The third trimester is the last stretch of pregnancy. It is the most uncomfortable for the mommy's body and the growth of the fetus and baby is pushing your body to its limits at this point. Also, there can be a lot of stress and anxiety at this part because it's becoming very, very real. The fact that you're going to have a baby. Congratulations. Welcome to the Mommy and Daddy Club. Pregnancy can last naturally without complications uh, or premature birthing after the 40th week. If a premature baby comes along, the baby will have to stay in the hospital for many, many weeks. Um, after the 42nd week, you are technically overdue. Your doctor will recommend most likely inducing labor or a cesarean. Inducing labor it is like basically forcing your body to have contractions by expanding the cervix and this process can take 12 to 48 hours. In, um, I personally was induced without the epidural. Another thing about birth is the epidural. Whether or not you want to do it is completely your choice. Um, but there's a lot of cons more, in my opinion, than pros when it comes to the epidural. I've known many, many women who've had the epidural without a problem. So if you want to do the epidural, go right ahead. That is your personal choice. That is mommy's personal choice. Um, personally, I did not want to do the epidural, and I have heard of many women who have gotten injuries on their spinal um, back areas uh, because once you do the epidural, it's about this long. It goes into your body and you cannot move. From what I understand, you cannot move when you get an epidural. So in order for birth to move along, you need, your body will naturally want to start shifting and you need to move in a squat position in order for pregnancy and labor to become easier for you. So um, just keep that in mind. And um, there's also many, many, many more complications and cons. For example, if you're, you're not able to feel when you're supposed to do the pushing and you don't feel the contractions. So a lot of people who have epidurals actually have longer birth than people without an epidural. For myself, my example, and my my own birth with my son, I've only had one, um, he, he, I didn't do the epidural, and I was able to push him um, within an hour of the third phase of labor. So labor has three phases, uh, phase one, phase two, and phase three. And phase three is, um, the most intense phase where they're actually pushing the baby out. And then you're also going to have to push out the placenta. Um, that part was really weird for me in my, <laughs> in my experience. Um, and it's, it's really strange because you're just like literally pushing out an organ out of your vaginal canal. Um, 
So those are just some warnings about the epidural in the third trimester. And another thing about the third trimester is that it just gets so uncomfortable. A lot of people suffer from acid reflux. Um, there's not a lot of room in your stomach, so in your body, and your placenta is pushing up against the stomach and a lot of the acid is starting to come back up. So definitely recommend um, getting eating foods that are not so um, starchy. I eat a lot of apples and bananas and yogurt and things like that. And that's the thing you have to eat constantly, like every two hours, because your stomach is so squished that your food, you don't have enough room for food. So you need to eat constantly, snack constantly. Um, I would even wake up in the middle of the night to eat, which was really strange for my partner at the time because he was just like, what are you doing? Why are you awake at three in the morning just eating by yourself? <laughs> and I, I was like, I don't know, dude, I'm just awake. So that's the other thing about the third trimester is that your body is preparing you mentally and physically to have the baby. So at night, you're going to be waking up in order to mentally prepare for waking up at night when your baby's born. It's like training you to wake up when your baby's born.